week, the Crimson discouraged women from running for the UC in an editorial entitled Don't Waste Your Time, which coincidentally is exactly how I feel about reading The Crimson. In other news, researchers at the Harvard School of Public Health have shown a link between sugary drinks and obesity. Similarly shocking studies have revealed links between getting a headache and hitting yourself in the head with a wrench. Classes can wait. You're on Harvard time. Hello and welcome to On Harvard Time. I'm Charlotte Nicholas. And I'm Zach Guzman. Earlier this month, Harvard Business School topped off Tata Hall. Tata Hall joins a long and storied list of building names that make us act like 12 year olds, including Hurlbut Dorm, Longwood Medical School, and Scrotum Tower. I always wondered how David Scrotum got in here. Harvard takes a lot of dicks. Well, Harvard's gonna have to take a lot of wealthy dicks now, because this year the university lost a whopping 0.05% of its investments. But I mean, size really doesn't matter, right? Right. Right? 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 Right. 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 That's right! Yes! Well, looks like Harvard's going to have to prepare by tightening those belts. That's to cure our diamond-encrusted money bags. To see how the massive cutbacks will affect Harvard students, we go to our reporter in the field. Thanks, Charlotte. The rippling shockwaves of the 0.05% cut in Harvard's endowment, shrinking it to a mere $30.7 billion, are still being felt throughout campus. Harvard students are suffering, crushed and despondent, as the endowment has moved from the size of the budget of a small European country to that of a slightly smaller European country. How are students responding to such meager means? Can day-to-day -day life possibly continue as normal? I hit Harvard Yard to find out. Are you aware that Harvard's endowment has recently shrunk by 0.05% to only $30.7 billion? Um, not actually. No. No, tell me more. No. I had no idea. No. No. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> Do you feel like it's been affecting your day-to-day -day life in any way? Um, the fact that I had no idea about it until you asked me just now, uh, I would say no. Do you think it's bad that they're, that they're losing some of their money that they could use for things? Yeah. Universidad más famosa del mundo, por eso estamos aquí para conocerla. Es una parte importante de. I'm in Spanish AA. Are, are you maybe worried about where your next meal is going to be coming from? Um, it's gonna be coming. I guess it's gonna be coming from Annenberg. You're not not concerned. Um, maybe about hot breakfast, but we don't have that anyway. So. The lines for food are just. Appalling. It's like the Great Depression here. Have you had to? Have you lost any of your toys as a result of the endowment cuts? Yeah. Well, economy is always going up and down. So I mean, up and down. Yeah. Then it's really. It just happens all the time. Like at certain point of the year, it just goes up and then comes bounce back. And like, what was this for? Do you think that this crisis could have been averted if the endowment had diversified more of its funds, more of its assets, into hedge funds and private equity? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, any any other suggestions for, for ways that we could raise this money at a grassroots level? Hmm, good question. Level. Grassroots level. Wow. A bake sale. No. Bake sale. We we'd actually been mentioning that earlier. What what's what sort of baked goods? Um <laughs> bake sale for uh, I, I like brownies, but brownies, br like brownies or like brownies. As you can see, many students are in denial, despondent after the crushing blow of the shrinking endowment. But a glimmer of hope remains as many students have created innovative solutions that can help turn our shit ton of money into an even larger shit ton of money. Back to you, Zach and Charlotte. Ah, that's terrible. What, the endowment? No, my friggin' IMAPS keeps misplacing locations all around campus. Poor, poor Apple-dependent freshmen. Now they'll never know where the quad is. My app says take five paces towards the widener and then two hectares east to get to the quadrangle. Hmm, something seems off. Well, now they have a valid excuse for being lost. And being late. Traffic congestion around campus lately has been more clogged than my arteries on beef fettuccine Alfredo night. But we here on Harvard Time got your back. We now go live to our new traffic correspondent so you can get to class on time. Thanks, Charlotte. Massive delays experienced around the Meyer Gate area during the morning rush hour commute today when two texters collided head on. Now, the minor accident was ballooned even further by other commuters who tried to force their way around the incident. Riveting. No fatal injuries, but we have been told that someone's iPhone got stepped on. 
Hubsy is still working to clear up the wreckage, so expect delays both yard bounds and science center bounds. Now, if you're planning to commute during the lunch hour, be advised that a tour group of old people is expected in around noon. Detours have been posted around this massive snail race, but still expect some minor delays and lots of picture taking. Oh, oh, I'm getting word now from my imaginary earpiece that two people who haven't seen each other in a long time are meeting in front of Meyer Gate. We go live now to the OHT Traffic Chopper. And yep, there they are. I'm being told that she asked him what classes he's taking and that he is generally reminding her they take three classes together. This could mean serious backup, folks. Oh, now he's asking her out for coffee. She's responding, she's so busy these days. Folks, you better hope your lecture is being taped because this could take a while to clear. Back to you guys in the studio. In other news, have you been seeing people in period clothing around campus? Sadly, it doesn't mean you're endowed with a sixth sense. These dandies are giving 90 minute historical tours of Harvard Square. Really? 90 minutes of history? I can't even get through a 53 minute lecture without Googling interspecies animal snuggling. Tourists uninterested in the history of Harvard can take one of On Harvard Times' very own future tours. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Doug 14. Welcome to Harvard Future Tours. Future. No singing, no singing. Ladies and gentlemen, this will be renamed the Erica Center after Supreme Overlord Mark Zuckerberg changed the names of all ugly buildings to the names of girls who turned him down. Ladies and gentlemen, in the future, the Harvard Crimson becomes the Harvard Green because, as we all know, green is the new crimson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in the future, the Harvard Lampoon is funny. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the site where the proletariat overthrew the bourgeoisie in the Great Revolution. Whoa, really? Ha, nope. It's actually just going to be a medium-sized Taco Bell. All right, let's move on. And this was never finished. And this was never finished. Jesus, build something. Speaking of Jesus, bad news, single ladies. A Harvard Divinity School professor discovered a papyrus containing the words, quote, and Jesus said to them, my wife. Jesus had a wife? Wow, that sex must have been incredible. I wonder who the lucky lady was. Oh, Jesus, how did you make all these loaves and fishes? I guess I'm just sort of magical like that. Oh my dad, you, you are a miracle worker. Men can be so goddamn inconsiderate. Well, that's all the time we have on Harvard I do the outro! That's all the time we have here on Harvard Time. Now here's a moment that can happen only at Harvard. Thank <laughs> you.